Hey, it's Coach and Dorn with Tactical Hive. In today's video, we're gonna be putting the uh, Glock 19 Gen 5 up against the Sig Sauer X Carry. A little head-to-head -head comparison. Let's see how they do. All right, guys, so like we said before, we've got the uh, Glock 19 and the Sig X Carry. And uh, we're gonna put these things just kind of through the paces and basically give you our, you know, opinions, basically. <laughs> You know, you guys, you guys, everybody already knows these. I hope you already own both of these or close to it. But uh, these are the best sellers. So we have the Glock, tried and true. Yeah, there's been a little bit of innovation, some of it forced, hence the Gen 5. But uh, they work. You know, these are the, uh, the mid-size carries. The Glock 19 is the best-selling handgun in America, has been for decades. Uh, the things just work. But, you know, it's got a lot to be desired. We'll get into that. And so SIG answered with their 320 line finally. And uh, once they got it, uh, the bugs worked out and things got rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. You can get these things in a lot of different sizes, but today we're just gonna be focusing on the kind of the best seller midsize, you know, for that concealed carry plus. Yeah, you, you know? can conceal carry them or you can. Today is not a J carry. frame day. Yeah. <laughs> today is a midsize day, not quite a full size day, definitely not a primary day, but you know what I mean. Yeah. One of those days, living one of those lives dealing with those sets of circumstances that uh, may pop up. So anyway, this is a great uh, kind of do it all size. You know, even in the, in the military, when you're doing everything with like a primary weapon system, everything's primary, primary, you've got issued half a dozen different primary weapon mm -hmm. systems for different jobs and applications. You've always got that pistol on your hip. And for years and years, we ran full size, full metal guns. We loved them. We, were, we didn't complain, complain about everything else, but not complaining about the 2-2. Not about the reliability, but, Dwayne. All good. But, you know, you just didn't use them all that much. So it, people started, of course, you know, back in our day, guys just brought whatever guns they wanted, especially pistols. And you really started to see, like, having a less than full-size, full-metal pistol could still get the job done. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing everything with your primary, you're transitioning to secondary. That's the same thing as cutting away your main and deploying a reserve. It just needs to be there and it needs to work. And um, long before the Navy, you know, went along with it, the Army had already adopted Glocks and that pretty much all of SOCOM followed, except for us. I would like to dig in our heels. But eventually we did switch to Glock and, um, you know, they work just fine. Well, on the, uh, almost nobody's getting shot with a pistol these days. I mean, you yeah. know, in combat, you can use a long gun. The AR platform is so damn dependable that, uh, you know, it, it honestly, we're looking at you know, hauling around this extra weight. So in my day, guys had cut down to, you know, in Afghanistan, we're running with a, uh, what, a 239? Yeah, two three nines were popular. 239, a little tiny little thing. And uh, we're like, what the hell's that? But dude, it was light. And light was right, man. You, you had, we yeah. had to cut wherever we could. Um, and now guys were, the Glock. guys were running like those car, this is a long time ago. So guys were running like those car arm, like little guys. Um, and then a lot of guys, depending on the mission set, didn't carry a pistol because they were just going to be out in the boonies, um, not really entering structures or anything like that. And man, and honestly, you know, as, as crazy as that is to think as much as I just would never want to do that, like you know, ounces equal pounds. And when you're living in especially a 762 world. Yeah, and when we're talking to, you know, guys from Vietnam, uh, Korea, Second World War, they the only people that had a, a pistol mm -hmm. were guys that were supporting a machine gun or carrying something else, doing a different yeah. job. Yeah. You know, I mean, they were yeah. a soft force conducting clearance. Right. And but sometimes they were on that. Yeah. But so. uh, I think like the airborne guys can pretty much have whatever they want. I digress. <laughs> anyway, freaking. Um, and then, you know, for more relevant topic, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you have the warfighter side of things. The conventional military has gone to the 320 and they have two different versions, but both have that full size grip running that mm -hmm. 17 round magazine standard. But back to, you know, everyday carry plus, you know, you're carrying this thing. God forbid you have to use it. This is, should be plenty of gun. If you know what you're doing and you train to it, there isn't a whole lot you should be able to accomplish with a full size that you could with a mid size. And then as you kind of, things start to drop down, they get more snappy. So we really wanted to kind of isolate this best of both worlds, you know, full size um, advantages. Also, you can conceal it. Potentially you can conceal it. Yeah, potentially, depending on how hot it is. If you live in a hot place like we do, it's a pain in the butt, which is why I never carry these damn things. But that's just me. <laughs> um, 
So it all depends on your threat level, guys. You know, this is something, you know, you, you want a high cap magazine, nine millimeter, we'll get the job done. Um, I'm not carrying a full size pistol, but I, I will carry this one. This is the biggest one that I'll carry concealed. Yeah. Everything else is either a J frame or some subcompact like the uh, 365. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so this being the most well rounded, right? You can carry it on your hip on a uh, an overt holster or you can possibly conceal it not not in your swim trunks though well maybe you you might be able to do that yeah hopefully it doesn't fall out <laughs> you know it could be like like dutch baby just rocking that clip draw like oh yeah man you know, just like shoot like, whoa wow <laughs> it's okay i mean i get it i haven't done it all right guys so the categories um obviously we're gonna have you know how big is it how small is it how heavy is it? How light is it? How light is it in the hands? Um, we can throw the specs up for you if it makes you feel better, but these things are very comparable in size and weight. They're both nine millimeter. They both have 15 round uh, flush fitting magazines, though you can run the longer ones if you want. Those are very popular um, in certain circles, but um, not so much in ours. That's okay, teach their own. How do you know a 15 round magazine for that bad boy? Yeah. and. Yeah, I mean, if you, the the difference is minuscule between a fifteen and a seventeen. Yeah, like not the difference, difference between a fifteen and a seventeen on a Glock is substantial, mm -hmm. very noticeable. But um, you know, so that kind of alludes to, yes, the three twenty is a much much more modern platform um, than the Glock. The Glock is basically the same gun it was forty years ago. There's been a little bit of uh, innovation, but there's also been a ton of innovation with Glock on the out third party market. Oh yeah. Tons and tons. And you know, if anybody was into shooting back in the 2000s, early 2010s, I mean, everybody and their mother was throwing out aftermarket Glock parts. People were mix and matching um, components yeah. and reliability. To your detriment, man. That's... Absolutely terrible. Um, it was, I mean, it was comical. You could go to a range and every single super Glock or trying to be super Glock didn't work. But you know, the private sector continued to develop and now you can pretty much buy a to Z from a third party company gun that they have already done all the legwork on. And pretty and, much if you want to do mods, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Because these are not AR guys. I mean, you know, people have, have kind of grown up with this uh, idea that, that AR, you can mix and match parts with a whole lot more uh, reliability, you know, baked in. What, whereas mm, Glock, not so much. You pretty much have to have somebody else build the damn thing for you. I've screwed up. I've got wrong triggers and had, you know, uh, weird things happen so uh, anyway yeah so as far as modularity goes you know you can go with either one but if you really want to trick out your glock beware because you know it's a it's a wilderness a possibility and capability out there but on the other side there's not a whole lot there is some um, aftermarket options for your sig um, this one has a wilson combat grip module and the grip module is just a 40 50 dollar part that you can just swap out if you wanted to do any kind of permanent stippling or anything like that to your Glock, you are actually permanently altering the receiver. If you jack it up, well, receiver. you got to buy a new gun. You are permanently altering the grip frame itself, which is legally the gun, like a receiver on an AR. So, you know, SIG got started on this uh, 320 path probably in the and they're early the first ones to, to come out with the, uh, the fire control mod. Yeah, they had the P250. You know, just kind of a yeah. test, and then they kind of began to really uh, refine it. So there is going to be some aftermarket components. I mean, Wilson Combat, I've got their full size. It's got that Grey Guns trigger, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Not going to lie. But the X uh, triggers and the standard triggers on the, on the freaking 320s are just fine. Honestly, I have no complaints. This bad boy has an actual Glock performance trigger in it that I went ahead and purchased because they swore it was going to be just as reliable. Uh, not so much, actually. And if I was going to actually carry this thing, I'd probably switch back to the stock trigger. But like I said, it's hot, so I don't. Yeah, I think don't. about Glocks. If you want them to go bang every time, just take them out of the box. Don't do a damn thing to them. Mm -hmm. Maybe put a different set of sights on and uh, leave everything else exactly the same. So conclusion for the first category, size, weight, et cetera. Um, they're a dead draw. They're yeah. both about exactly the same. Sure, there's going to be a little bit of difference. You can geek out on the specs or whatever. Don't care. As Paul Harrell would say, there's not enough difference to make a difference. So we can move on. Yeah. Love you, Paul. Good speed. Anyway, um, all right. So and then as far as modularity goes, you know, you can find it if you're looking for it. But honestly, SIG, you know, 
has a few decades of experience that the Glock was, you know, kind of partially the main innovator, I guess the innovator. Invented by an Austrian shovel maker. Yeah, an Austrian so. shovel slash mess kit maker made the Glock and, you know, God rest his soul. But um, there was a lot of third party innovation as we already spoke to, but so SIG already just kind of did all that for you. You know, there's, they make two different triggers. There's the gray guns trigger that I have and it's, it's nice. I like it, I haven't had any issues with it. And then, you know, there's different grip modules coming out. Of course, there's different sights, but the stock Trinium sights on a 320 are nice. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're easy to see. They do everything you need them to. They're almost like a hybrid, you know, bright. You can get them in orange or green, definitely green. Um, then they have the Trinium built into them. You know, the plastic stock sights on a Glock are just kind of a legacy joke item. I know some people <laughs> use them. And um, oftentimes at classes, I'll let them shoot a Glock that has, you know, not those sights. And they're like, oh, wow, this is great, way better. Like, well, yeah, it is. Um, and then their stock Glock Tritium sights are the same exact Tritiums I was seeing in the 90s, I think. Definitely early 2000s. Yeah, I mean, SIG's Tritium is, their X-ray trigger or X-ray uh, sight is mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. I mean... It's, really, it's they, they just kind of have their brand stuff that is as good as anything you're going to find on the, um, the third-party market. Uh, this Glock has uh, Trijicon sights. They're kind of those wide um, crutch because I can't shoot sights. I was just trying them out. And I would have swapped them out, but I just never shoot the gun. And now it has a red dot, so I super don't care. But, um, you know, just be careful with that. Definitely do your research. Or if you just like to try things or try things like I do, go for it. But um, so as far as modularity goes, um, I got to give it to the SIG because I mean, this is the Gen 5 and it, you know, they released this weapon because they were forced to by the FBI, um, you know, which is another story for another day. But um, as you can see, they really kicked up the ergonomics on this thing based on or compared to previous models. And that is because they needed to build their version of this gun based on the... Uh, bid criteria mm -hmm. so this one has a slide stop on both sides you can switch around the magazine release it's got some uh no finger grooves it's got the checkering i took the slide stop up on the other side um i don't know it's like as i felt like it at the time and i don't care enough to put it back but um this this gun really kind of caused Glock's Gen 5 to happen and a lot of the more modern innovations that you're seeing on you know modern pistols coming out in the past few years is because of this thing so yeah. again as far as the ergonomics go yeah. and as far as you know being able to manipulate it with both hands left and right back and forth I still got to give it to the 320 well, yeah, and then this one, it, to my point here, um, they yeah, they changed all that ergonomic stuff, but they missed the two worst things. The grip angle is too steep, and you still got this really squared off trigger guard, which uh, will give you that Glock knuckle, and you guys, you Glock shooters out there know exactly what I'm talking about. So, I mean, yeah, they smoothed out some other stuff, but uh, yeah. they didn't fix the, the, the problems that, uh, that, well, concerned me most. But yeah. Anyway, I it's my favorite Glock that I, I own. I never owned a Gen Four, but that was the issued pistol for my last couple of years in the military. Um, the true, the, even the stock trigger on the Gen Five was noticeably better than the Gen Four, in my opinion. But maybe that's because I was going from a two two six to a Gen Four, and it was just a mushy mess and a, just a joyless gun to shoot, especially when you're like on these state of the art moving steel ranges and you're trying to like get after it. You just have this mushy mess, but you know, maybe I'm just- But it's the left. same mushy mess every time you yeah, press the trigger. Yeah, it's consistent. Whereas the 226, you have that long double action to start with, and then every other trigger squeeze after that was nice and sweet, single action, just good to go. Yeah, so, you know, between Glock triggers never being much to uh, write home about, the inconsistency of the aftermarket triggers, and then basically the kind of failure of this Glock performance trigger, I definitely got to give the trigger to the SIG. Um, but, you know, moving on, you know, what do we got next? Reliability? Uh, yeah. I uh, gotta go with the Glock. You know, yeah. if I had kept the standard trigger in there, I, I would have had zero issues with this thing. I have taken 
many, many Glocks right out of the box, brand new, and just started shooting them, and they required little, if any, break-in period. They just work. They're shovels. They do what they do. They're they're basically AK forty seven. So Tupperware AK forty seven for your pocket. Yeah, yeah. the three twenty definitely not. I've had break in issues. They're obviously they're having other issues with the three twenty. Their initial rollout, they had to recall their trigger, which maybe that should factor into the trigger vote. But it was it was quite a while ago. I think it was over yeah, 10 that's, years that's, ago. Yeah, that's a long time ago. They, they um, figured it out. But then there are some disturbing videos out there. Of, yeah, clocks are off. just randomly going off in holsters. I mean, they probably are, but they probably happen so often and been happening for so long, if at all, ever, just speculating here, that nobody cares. But, you know, 320 has had rollout issues. They had a trigger recall. There's been some crazy videos of them going off in Kydex locking holsters, uh, which is very odd. Mm. Um, concerning. Yeah, concerning to say the least. I'm not that concerned. I've shot this thing a lot. I still carry it. And mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, and it's the second wow. best selling platform in America. So, I mean, there's tons of LE using them. There's the military is using them. And they're flying off the shelf in the civilian market. And, um, you know, there have been a few instances. Um, you can talk to people from SIG, you know, they're going to tell you that people are modifying and messing with their stuff. I'm like, okay, well, I might not, be. Who knows? Yeah, who, and maybe that's the case. I really couldn't tell you. I'm there. But um, Glock is AK-47 reliable. Is it perfect? Have people had bad experiences with Glocks? Yes. Have people had bad experiences with AKs? Yeah. Have people had bad experiences with ARs? And ARs are, you know, an AR that's built correctly um, is generally very reliable. But sometimes, you know, there are those break-in periods, and I've had that. Many times with the 320, never had it with the Glock. What about you? Yeah, about the same. I mean, Glock, you, you pick it up, it's uncomfortable in your hand, but it works every time. Um, actually, this SIG, uh, this particular iteration, um, when I first got it, it took a, about 100 rounds. You know, it was, it was had a few little little issues with cycling and all that, but once everything, once everything you know worked itself in there, we're all good. Oh so, yeah, a little bit of break-in issue. Um, but the ergonomics and the, uh, you know, the feel of it, you know, the, the trigger, everything, I, I tend to go with this just because I grew up on, you know, the 1911 and then the SIG and the, the grip angle is the same. So for me, it's just a lot more comfortable to shoot. Okay. So as far as, you know, reliability goes, we got to give it to the Glock. I mean, Glocks are known for one thing and that is being ugly and uncomfortable to shoot. I guess technically that's two things. But if there was a third <laughs> thing on the list, it would be reliability. Goes bang every you know? time. I mean, honestly, if, if they were heavier, maybe they'd be more reliable. Uh, though you can't throw and hit people with these. It's been done. Don't recommend it. Not advocating, but you know, I'm just saying it's an option. Um, no, but in all seriousness, guys, the, the Glocks are just hands down more reliable. Uh, which is why they're the best seller because if it doesn't work you can't trust it to work then it's a toy or if you're in harm's way or, or could be in harm's way it's a huge liability and in my opinion is unacceptable but that's just mm -hmm. me up next guys mags Mag. you know and uh you know the glock mags are a little bit thicker they've got that uh, plastic coating but they are, truly are a double stack the sig mags are more of a traditional magazine um, they, they do have, definitely have better springs, more modern, mm. more better springs, but you start to see that a little bit on the Glock side, like with those shield mags, etc. I haven't had any 320 mags completely wear out on me yet, but I also can't think of any Glock mags that have worn out. And I've been shooting Glocks for going on 20 years. And I mean, we shot them at work and just beat the living crap out of them. The Sig Mag could wear out a little bit, but maybe that's an unfair comparison because a Sig Mag could stay in the in, a, in an inventory for years and years and years. The two two sixes, yeah, yeah. yeah those. That, sorry, yeah, the two two six mags. I just have never seen Glock mags wear out, and Glock mags have been around much much longer. They're far more um, commonly in use, and from my personal experiences, I've used these much much more at every level than the Sig mags. Mm -hmm. The Glock mags also have, you know, like Magpul's making them. And I think a few other companies are making them. Be aware of the clear plastic made overseas ones, because those suck. Um, especially those like really long ones that are like just 
clear plastic. Those oh, things are, they're so sexy when you got your... Yeah, those things are notoriously bad. But as long as you stick with Glock factory, which are everywhere, anywhere that sells guns yeah. is going to have them. And then honestly, some people uh, hate on the Magpul ones, that they're not quite as well made. They're not quite as robust. I'm okay with the, but my, the Magpuls that I'm using. Yeah, my casual use, even the, the time I spent in the military using them, I have no complaints. You can drop them on the hard concrete deck over and over and over again. I've never broken one. Um, I have never broken a 320 mag. No. Um, but you know, I'm not as, you know, I haven't used these as much. I don't have as much time on them, but I don't, these are, but what's going to give the Glock, spoiler alert, the edge on mags is they're cheap and they're everywhere. So even if these are made to the same standard, they're just as reliable. They're just as easy to clean. You should be able to get as many rounds out of them throughout your the lifespan these things are cheaper they're easier to find and i mean forget about it like of course we're going to give the freaking they're cheaper by two to one pretty much yeah or, or maybe a little yeah, bit like better much cheaper um the one thing that i'll give to the uh to the sig mag is uh when you hit that magazine release it comes flying out uh, it's sometime that polymer on polymer drags a little mm -hmm. bit and you got to strip that bad boy out of there but um uh, yeah they're more expensive and they just don't have the track record, the time that mm -hmm. Glock Max do. So and that being yeah, said, you know, the uh, again, the aftermarket side on Glock is just so fierce. Uh, when I was in my last job, we was I was teaching. They ordered us a ton of this Terran tactical stuff. And um, I've still got a few of these base plates. I think I have some in some other brands as well. But yeah, that weighted base plate on your first mag that's in the gun, like your, that thing just goes. You know, we got some plus two um, base plates as well. Yeah, so. plus twos, plus fives, all the pluses. Yeah. You know, like uh, adds a couple of rounds and it gives you a little extra weight to, to help the ejection. But um, yeah, yeah, but on the uh, the 320 side, unless you're running a whatever that is on the big ones, the About plus 21. five. Yeah, um, I haven't messed with that stuff at all. But yeah, so the Sig Mags are that all metal construction. They, uh, you know, they slide right out of the gun, same as it ever was. Having a weighted base plate um, isn't as much of a concern, but um, you know if you are having issues with that uh, mag dropping out quick, fast, and in a hurry, just um, try out the weighted base plates or the plus twos or the plus fives or whatever you're into. And if one of those guys that's running the the freaking 17L with the mag light and the freaking M2 comp and like the 30 round mag and that uh, what are those things? We know those guys. Yeah, yeah, you know, cool. You do you. Probably a bright hydrate, color, you know. Rainbow. Hydrate, get out of the sun if that's a thing. Yeah. But um, so what would we say? So the magazines edge out is blocked because of reliability. Yeah, and yeah the reliability and the price record, really. Yeah. yeah, you might get some sticky issues, but they, that can be alleviated with cleaning your equipment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that does help. I've looked into it, <laughs> and uh, it always works out that way. Occasionally, yeah. and then uh, yeah, just throwing on that base plate, and it's worth it. You can you could buy mag with the base plate and probably the ammo and you'd still be cheaper than one of these friggin things so yeah. you know sig bring down the damn price i know that he's only 50 bucks a piece cool all right anyway all right guys so we're just going to uh, run through a little course of fire just from the holster kind of swap the pistols back and forth and just kind of give you our uh, blatant opinions on uh, what we like and don't like. All right, guys, so, you know, after just a little bit of casual shooting, you know, warming up or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, they do feel a little bit different. Triggers are a little bit different. Again, I'm having issues with this uh, when I put this performance trigger in, but I think that's due to uh, the pin kind of wobbling. Yeah, it locked up on me. Once. Yeah, I'm just feeling, definitely going to have to tighten that up before I have my full conclusion and opinion on that. But, um, I mean, honestly, they're a dead heat. Um, it really goes down to personal preference. 
what really drew me to the Glock from the very beginning was that, you know, I was living in a SIG world where everything was SIG, 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 and everybody was, ta you know, talking down about Glocks this, Glock that. But even back, you know, 20 years ago, better part, Glocks were still incredibly better sellers and more commonly found. So that's kind of what drew them to me in the first place. And, um, you know, my opinion hasn't changed. 320, you know, yeah, it's more modern. You know, you get more bang for your buck, I think. You know, definitely coming out of, coming, you know, buying a stock gun. Mm -hmm. But um, you can pretty much do as much with one as you can with the other. What do you think? Yeah, man. I mean, I um, I bought a Glock 21 Gen 2 back when they first came out. I was like, wow, man, 45 holds 13 rounds in a mag. Awesome. Um, but because I've got so many rounds through a SIG, through that grip pitch, that's the one thing. If you're gonna train with one, I mean, they're they're good. Either one of them, choose what you want, but it's kinda of gonna come down to training, okay? Train with it, because when you stick your hand out here like this, in a uh, in that high stress situation, where your, your uh, wrist is will depend on how much time you have on that actual gun. So if you train a lot with a, with a SIG, a 1911, anything like that, yeah, I'm sticking with the SIG grip pitch. That, that's the biggest thing for me is that grip yeah. pitch. Under stress, uh, you know, that first shot, maybe. I don't know. Um, but everything after that, you're going to want to go back to whatever uh, that grip pitch is that you've uh, you've trained. So pick one. Either way, I don't care. But just train with it. Yeah, definitely. The 320 is going to fall in line with more commonality as far as that grip pitch. And I noticed switching back and forth, because we just went back and forth half a dozen times, that I was definitely hitting low with the 320. Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, I'm just not... I was hitting uh, high with the clock. <laughs> yeah, like, so it just, you know, it really comes back to that muscle memory and, you know, trying to do things even just casually fast. We weren't really going nuts or anything. But, um, you know, if you're going to train with lots of different platforms, keep that in mind. But, you know, as far as out of the box and it being feeling more familiar, if you're, you're switching from a different platform or even if you're new to guns, uh, the 320 is definitely gonna be the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, not taking anything away from the Glock, but it's just different to be different. It was designed by a guy who really, really didn't know anything about guns. And he thought the Luger, old Luger 08, yeah, they just need a little more. Uh, yeah, he, that's what he based it off of was like the German Luger of like World War One lore. Although the, the Luger is like really pitched, yeah, it's got even more. So he kind of went half and half, and uh, and in my opinion, he didn't get quite 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 far enough. Yeah, yeah, no, it is it is odd, but it is what it is, and what it is is a reliable gun that uh, is cheap and easy to find parts for, easy to get mags for, and uh, they work. Um, parting shot, we didn't seem to have any issues with coaches x carry but um other 320s i've noticed have a hard time cycling certain types of ammo mm -hmm. um yet you'll take that type of ammo and every other type and put it through any glock any of my glocks and they work great yeah some of miles uh lower pressure competition ammunition yeah. some uh, of that uh some of that uh, sweet stuff you know little low enough on the power band just to be uh, barely legal yeah is i think the term we were looking for <laughs> miles into that barely legal uh, barely ammo legal. And um, as far as this competition stuff, but the Glocks, man, they just, they run everything. And uh, the military ammo, that M882, that's basically like a plus P round. Mm -hmm. You know, those things beat the heck out of guns. And uh, they do wear them out quite a bit in the schoolhouse after tens of thousands of rounds. But, um, you know, you shoot that stuff in this thing, no problem. And you can shoot the uh, just over 380, barely legal 9 mil stuff, and it just takes it all. 320, uh, not so much. So, you know, that counts for anything. Um, yeah, for on your own, you know, know the ammo. You know, you got self-defense ammo, you should shoot a fair amount of it through whatever platform you have just to make sure that your gun actually cycles it. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, we like both of them for both reasons. We both use both of them, um, you know, as civilians teaching and making content. Uh, I think that 320 is a little bit of a better shooter overall, especially a better value, but... Um, you know, Glock just has that reliability that I went ahead and sabotaged by putting this damn trigger in. <laughs> but, you know, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, you, but anyway, guys, thanks, right, yeah. Yeah, thanks for being here. You know, it's the door coach just giving you the spiel. I'll catch you next time. Out.